So far, you've learned the basics of thinking in Compose and how to create a composable function. One thing you might have noticed is that we use components like row, text, and radio button, but we've got so much more for you. Compose actually ships with a powerful toolkit of UI components out of the box, enabling you to build rich UIs and interactions. Previously, we've looked at how to build a portion of the single choice question screen in the Jet Survey sample app. Let's see how we can build the rest of the screen to match our design specs using the Compose toolkit. First, let's talk about one of my favorite topics, styling. Jetpack Compose makes it easy to give your app a consistent look and feel by shipping with an implementation of Material Design from the start. Material Design is an adaptable system of guidelines, components, and tools that support the best practices of user interface design. Jetpack Compose supports Material Design 2 and 3, the next evolution of Material Design. Material 3 features updated components and Material U customization features designed to match the new look and feel on Android 12 and above. With Material Design, your app can be themed to match your brand by providing custom colors, typography, and shapes all in one place. Let's see how JetSurvey uses Material Theming to style the whole app. The JetSurvey codebase defines a new composable function, JetSurvey Theme. Here we can see that it uses the Material Theme composable function and provides custom values for colors, shapes, and typography. Different color values are provided depending if the system appearance is set to dark or light. This allows the app colors to respond automatically when the system theme is changed by the user. Different fonts and styles are set like weight, size, and line height. This allows text to appear and be styled consistently. And lastly, a shape value is provided, which allows customization of rounded corners for different sizes of shapes in the app. To use this custom theme, the theme function should be the outermost function that we invoke. In the survey fragment file, we can see that it is the first line called within set content of the compose view, a view that can host composable functions. All the contents within it would then use all the shapes, typography, and colors defined in the theme. A fundamental material design component that is part of the toolkit is called a scaffold. A scaffold is a basic layout for arranging material components in common patterns such as a screen with a small top app bar and floating action button. From a high level, we can see that the survey screen conforms to a scaffold. It has a top app bar, contents, and a bottom bar. Let's see how the scaffold layout is used in the Jet Survey codebase. Survey screen file defines a composable function called survey question screen. This is the composable that shows all the questions in the survey. Here we can see that it declares a scaffold and provides a couple of parameters to it. First, it provides a value for the top bar parameter, which is a composable function lambda representing the top app bar for the screen. Here we can see that it invokes a call to survey top app bar, which will render the user's progress in the survey. Next, it provides a value for the content parameter, which is also a composable function lambda. The content rendered shows the current question the survey the user needs to answer. And lastly, it provides a value for the bottom bar, which again is a composable function lambda, making a call to survey bottom bar, which will render the next and previous buttons so the user can progress through the survey. Notice that the scaffold is contained within a surface composable function. Let's take a look at that next. Another fundamental component in material design is the concept of a surface. A surface is a central metaphor in material design which content sits on. A surface has a color, a shape, a border, as well as tonal and shadow elevation. Apart from surface, chances are you're going to need a lot more components to build any kind of UI you can think of. This is why Compose provides a bunch of other material design components out of the box, like top app bars, buttons, cards, switches, chips, dividers, floating action buttons, and a whole lot more. Understanding and building in ways that cater to the diverse needs of your users can be a challenge. To help with this, Material 3 components are also all accessible by default, featuring acceptable color contrast ratios and a minimum touch size and more. And that's only scratching the surface on Material Design. You can check out the Compose Material 3 API reference 
and the Material Design 3 website at the URLs shown here to learn more. We've looked at how to arrange components on a single answer in the survey by using the row composable function. But how do we arrange all the different components for the rest of the screen? We do that by using layouts. Compose has three standard layout elements. As we've seen, to horizontally arrange items, we can wrap our UI components in a row composable function. On the other hand, if we want to vertically arrange items, we would use the column composable function. Another common layout is box. Box is what you want when you want to put or stack elements on top of another. For example, if you wanted to show an image on the bottom right corner stacked on top of another element. These standard layouts also accept parameters so you can further control how items are placed. Taking our current implementation of survey answer, if we want to try to run this, an answer in the survey would actually look something like this. To change that, let's pass in some additional parameters to the row. To change the vertical alignment of items in the row, let's pass alignment.center vertically for the vertical alignment parameter. With this change, we should now see the items vertically centered. Also, if we want to change the horizontal arrangement of items, we can pass a value like arrangement.space between, which will place children so that they are spaced evenly across the row. We won't see much of an effect yet with this change, but we'll see why this matters in a bit. There's so much more to layout with layouts, so make sure to check out the documentation pages to learn more. So far, we've covered styling, components, and layouts. But how do we control things like sizing, padding, and other appearances? You do that by using modifiers. Modifiers allow you to decorate or augment a composable. Every composable function in the Compose Toolkit accepts a modifier as a parameter. Modifiers can be chained together until you achieve your desired customization. Modifiers allow you to do all sorts of things, like set a background color, change the size, add padding of an element, change the alpha of an element. Modifiers allow you to process inputs like making an element clickable. Additional modifiers might also be available to you depending on the scope of a composable function. For instance, if you're within the scope of a box, the align modifier allows you to position an element relative to the containing box. Here, we're changing the alignment of the text element to be bottom end so that it aligns to the bottom right corner of the containing box. This modifier wouldn't be accessible outside of the box composable and its scope, which makes modifiers type safe. Using modifiers, we can further customize the survey answer composable to match our designs. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm assuming here that the composable is called within our app's theme so that the typography, shapes, and colors match our brand. First, Let's further customize the row by passing in a modifier. Since we want the item to occupy the maximum allotted horizontal space, let's call fill max width. The item has a padding of 16 dp, so let's chain a padding modifier. With these modifications, our answer item is looking a lot closer to our desired output. Notice though, there are a few more styling tweaks that we need to make. To add a border around our item and change its shape, Let's wrap the row composable around a surface composable. Doing so, we can change the shape, let's set that to small, and we can change the border by setting it to 1dp as well as its color. And that's it. We've only covered a few modifiers, and there are a bunch more that you can use to modify your composable functions. So make sure to check out the documentation pages by following this link to learn more. In, what was it, a couple of minutes? We were able to build a simple screen using material theme, the material components provided out of the box, and we saw how we can lay out composables using row, column, and box, and how to build that pixel-perfect UI with modifiers. In the next video in the series, we'll cover Compose tooling and show how these tools can help accelerate your development. Make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you in the next one.